Orlando Magic, a backcourt of Anthony Hardaway and Nick Anderson. Hardaway taking up most of the slack offensively with Shaquille O'Neal in foul trouble the other day. And up front, Shaquille is certainly hoping to get more minutes in today. Dennis Scott and Horace Grant on the front line. And there's the head coach, Brian Hill, looking for his team to show more of a, a sense of urgency. He did not feel that was the case on Saturday for game number three. Here are the Indiana Pacers. They open up with Mark Jackson, who had an outstanding all-around game, 13 assists on Saturday. Reggie Miller. And on the front line, it'll be Rick Smith, Derek McKee, who has been lifting his game offensively in this series, and, and Dale Davis. A coach of the Pacers, Larry Brown, hoping to keep the score down in the first half, not satisfied with uh, Saturday's first half defensive effort. And as always, we are joined on the sideline by the Dean, Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? All right, thanks, Marv. There was one scary moment for the Indiana Pacers. Antonio Davis, who had missed 20 games with a back injury, came down hard after this rebound, and everybody was frightened, thought he might be hurt. But what it turned out to be was two bruised elbows. I talked to him before the game. He said he's fine. He didn't need any treatment, and he's ready to go. One last thing on this pinwheel controversy. The pinwheels will not be allowed as a distraction, but the fans will be able to do this. Don't look at this too closely. It will distract you. Marv? And Matt, we are not responsible if the Dean is tossed from the building. <laughs> I'm distracted. <laughs> the officials, Steve Chavy, Mike Mathis, and Jack Neese. As we get set for game number four. I look for the Magic to really punch the ball inside to Shaquille O'Neal just about every trip down the floor. They want Shaq to establish his presence inside and get the Pacers into foul trouble. And also, the Magic have to improve their rebounding. Dale Davis and Shaquille O'Neal on the opening tip, and it's controlled by the Magic. Hardaway played by Jackson. Neal getting position. Banking with Smith's going right to the basket. And actually, Rick Smith did a decent enough job of pushing Shaq off the block, but he would not be denied. He's going to power no matter what happened. Jackson. Smith's took a pop down low from Anderson. Now Smith's on the move. Won't count, but a foul call. And it's called on Shaquille O'Neal. Well, the big people for Indiana have been trying to meet Shaq earlier, push him off the block as Smiths did there. Shaq with a couple of dribbles, and Indiana has the philosophy, let's just play him head up to see what happens before they start coming down to double team. Jackson for three. Well, Mark Jackson, who had a solid all-around outing on Saturday, although he was not hitting his shot, Dennis Scott for three. So Scott matches Mark Jackson's toss from downtown, and it's a 5-3 Orlando lead. Actually, Mark Jackson has been shooting better from beyond the arc, 5 for 10 now than he is directly from the field. O'Neal on the rebound, Hardaway racing it down. Hardaway pulls up for three, and he has been on fire from downtown. Did not shoot the three well against the Bulls, but... He is now 11 of 17 from three-point range in this series. The Magic with an 8-3 advantage. Well, both teams are shooting the ball very well from three-point land. You just have to wonder how long it can continue. Neither team has really been cold at all from beyond the line. Penny Hardaway on what amounted to be a slow, fast break. Had Dennis Scott over on the left side. But he appears to me the last couple of games were really offensive conscious, making sure that he's going to get himself involved early in the ball. Game. Illegal defense called against Orlando. Smiths for the a long range hook. And a good job by Nick Anderson blocking out the six foot eleven Dale Davis. O'Neal around Smiths. Once he got the step, Smiths did not 
want to pick up the foul, so it became an uncontested move for Shaquille O'Neal. you got to think, Larry Brown sensing right now that the Magic are going to go into Shaq right away to let him make things happen inside. They will probably have to come down and double-team immediately. Well, Orlando's opened up in the same manner they did here in game three. They've hit their first four shots. Bad pass. Hardaway has a three-on-one. Anderson hit by McKee. Yes, and it counts. Nick Anderson finishing off the three-on-one, and he will go to the line. Reggie Miller out of control here. Lost his footing a little bit. Thought he saw somebody open, but right into the body of Penny Hardaway. And not a good foul here by Derek McKee. He was clearly beaten on that lane. Probably would have been better off just letting Anderson lay it in. Orlando 13, Indiana 3, and a timeout is taken by Larry Brown with two and a half gone by in this first quarter. A very fast start by the Magic. I'm Ad Rashad back at Market Square Arena now. There were some things written in the Indianapolis paper today about in the, uh, the Pacers saying that the Orlando Magic were a bunch of nice guys. It was hard to get mad against them guys like it was when they were playing against the Knicks. So, in effect, these things were put up on the bulletin board trying to fire up the Magic team. I talked to Tree Rollins about that, and I said, Tree, what's up with the, with the stuff on the bulletin board? He said, well, it was an empty bulletin board, so we figured that something should go up on the bulletin board. He said it didn't have any effect on any of the guys, but it was great reading. But I asked Shaq about it, he said, yeah, it affected me. I'm playing mad today. Mark? All right, Amar, yes, uh, Indiana players uh, pointing out that uh, this series in sharp contrast and going up against a club like the New York Knicks. <laughs> well, that always will be a contrast. Nobody can be quite as mean and testy as New York. Magic with a 13-3 lead with three minutes gone by in this first quarter, and Shaquille O'Neal adds to that lead. It's a 13-0 run by Orlando. They hit their first six shots. Remember, in game one, the Pacers opened up with a 23-5 advantage, but then lost the game. Orlando came from way back to win. Here's McKee. And the tip is good by Dale Davis. Larry Brown is trying to decide who he wants to go to. That time, Derek McKee. I'm sure he'd like to get it into Rick Smith and possibly pick up a second foul on Shaquille O'Neal. And he can't forget Reggie Miller, but McKee has had a lot of success against Horace Grant. Scott. Scott was well covered by Miller. Could not get off the long-range shot. Miller with a runner. Jackson. Oh, Mark Jackson. Has accounted for five of the Pacers' seven points. Four minutes in, it's a 15 7 lead for Orlando. And the Magic just loves the tempo that uh, they have been able to force here in the early moments. This is their style of basketball. And Shaquille O'Neal dominating, but a loose ball foul is called. And that is number two on Shaquille. In game three, he had a sit early after picking up the two fouls. Well, I'm surprised that the Pacers did not come down sooner and double team. McKee came late after the ball was on the floor, but Shaq is so pumped up for this game to get himself going offensively. He is just attacking the rim, and that's how he picked up that foul, being over-aggressive. And Brian Hill going with Tree Rollins, a man who committed five fouls in five minutes the other day, although in game three, Jeff Turner got the call first and did the job offensively. Here's Jackson. Three seconds. And a three-second violation call. Well, Sha Shaq misses this first attempt on the jump hook. May have gotten away with a little bit of the shuffle feet, shuffling of the feet, and really I didn't see much of a wave off there. Just a lot of people around Shaquille. I thought he went straight up. Hill sitting down with six points on three out of four from the field. Nice move by Anderson, but he could not put it down. And a loose ball foul against ball Orlando. It's called on Rollins. Well, Larry Brown has said he's every bit as concerned about the other post players for Orlando. Nick Anderson, Penny Hardaway, Dennis Scott has been doing some of it as well. He, he has felt from looking at tape that the Magic have gotten almost more out of posting up their guards. Magic with a 15-7 lead. Five minutes in. Another open shot for Jackson. 
Larry Brown telling us he wants Mark Jackson to take the shots. And Orlando certainly presenting Mark with the open well, shot. He will get him plenty of them, and he's right in that shooter's position from the top. That's where Penny Hardaway is going down to double team. They'll let Jackson continue to take it all afternoon. On the other hand, Larry also saying we are getting so many open shots and have to be selective about it. Scott had a force it with a shot clock running down. Off the save. It will be Orlando Ball. Oh, Reggie scrambling down there, trying to get possession, was in trouble, falling out of bounds, saw the tall presence of Rick Smith and just tried to throw it high, but threw it behind the glass. The Pacers feel that the, the wrong people on their ball club are taking many of those open shots. Oh, also, Dale Davis is going to be left with a lot, as is Antonio Davis, because of the big men of Orlando trying to help out inside defensively. Miller for three. Reggie Miller with his first bucket. So Orlando leads by five. And the Magic have missed their last five shots after opening up six for six. Scott to Grant. And able to swing it out. Anderson not able to hit the three. Here comes McKee in the open floor for Jackson. So the Pacers with a good run to close within three points. Nine unanswered for Indiana. All the way trying to slice through and was held. Well, Indiana has been talking about selective fast breaks being disciplined. This was a fast break opportunity for Reggie Miller pulling up at the three. They will run all they can with Shaquille O'Neal on the bench. And here's another one as Mark Jackson able to get inside. Nick Anderson, all bets are off with Shaq on the bench. They don't want to run when Shaquille is out there because they think he can dominate in a running type situation. Horace Grant coming up short. He thought he was fouled. 9-0 run for Indiana, looking for more. Dale Davis dumped it off. Rick Smith. 11 straight points for the Pacers, able to answer the spurt by Orlando. They had a 13-0 run. And a timeout called by the Magic. 4.58 remaining. In the first, the Magic lead is now one. Well, Larry Brown certainly not pleased about the manner in which Orlando was able to uh, start, but uh, happy that his Pacers were able to turn it around and get uh, back into it, but does not want to get into the same type of game as uh, we saw in the first half on Saturday. We talked about that with Larry Brown. I think their game is to outscore you. They want to get you in a quick tempo game, and we have a problem because everybody seems like they got an open look and sometimes the wrong guys are shooting the ball or trying to make the play. Uh, but I would think they would continue to try to get us in a, in a fast tempo game like they had the first half here. Um, and our job is to be selective on who shoots the ball. I want us to run, but if the break's not there, I want us to make sure we post the ball up and put pressure on their interior defense. Well, Orlando certainly did get Indiana into that uh, fast tempo game right at the start. And they're trying to quicken the pace again, although Indiana is in the midst of a good run. Orlando has missed its last eight shots after hitting their first six. Here's Jeff Turner who just checked in, and he has had the hot hand. Ten points on Saturday and coming in for Shaquille O'Neal, and he hits the three from the corner to give the Magic an 18-14 lead. Well, Brian Hill did not like what he saw with Tree Rollins out on the floor. Tree not being an offense a threat and really getting caught in the up and down game at least with the smaller team now going up and down the floor a little bit better and having this perimeter threat trying to draw Rick Smith away from the basket was very effective in game three in that second quarter and Jeff trying to do it again and Turner was called for the foul Jeff Turner said the, uh, the spinning pinwheels may have uh, helped his game it hypnotized him into the good shooting performance he was in the zone Davis called for steps. So he may be unhappy about the, the NBA's no pinwheel policy. 
just a case of self-deprecation on the part of Jeff. He has a lot of confidence in his perimeter shot. It's something he works very long and hard hours on. Right, here's Scott off the pump. And Orlando able to settle down after that Indiana run. They now lead by six. And Larry Brown countering, not necessarily taking this opportunity to give Rick Smith a little bit of a rest while Shaquille is out. And really doesn't like the fact that Rick Smith can't get out and cover a Jeff Turner or a Horace Grant has gone with a small lineup. Byron Scott who just checked in. And it's the eighth round by Turner. It will be Indiana ball. Here's Sam Mitchell coming on. Indiana Mitchell. They'll give Dale Davis a rest. So it is Mitchell with Antonio Davis as the two big men and three guards on the floor. Miller with Jackson and Scott. And a foul. Dennis Scott called for the foul on Byron Scott. And it's getting smaller and smaller as far as the teams out there concerned. Both coaches making sure they are matched up. Let's see if Byron Scott is behind the three-point line when he releases the shot. No, he tried to back up. They're just calling it a two-shot foul. This has been a first quarter of spurts. 15-3 run by Orlando. 11-0 run by Indiana. Orlando has scored the last five points. Byron Scott, only 7 of 24 from the field in the, in the next series. In this series, opened up with 18 in game one, but has dropped off, has uh, not been shooting well. 18 minutes, only 1 of 4 the other day. Orlando Magic, though, with vivid memories of Byron Scott last season. He did hit that uh, big three-pointer with a couple of seconds left. But gave Indiana a one-point win. Byron just two for 11 since that 18-point first game. Really struggling with his shot. Not looking very confident at all. Good play. Scott knocking it away from Anderson. And it will be Indiana ball. Haywood Workman checks in for the first time. So Workman with Scott and Miller in the three-guard set. Just under three minutes to go in this opening quarter. Mitchell on the drive. Sam Mitchell brings the Pacers within three. Well, the Pacers that time just spreading the floor as much as possible. Mitchell taking advantage of it as the Magic have had problems defending people off the dribble. That's a rare miss from downtown for Hardaway. Miller, penetrated, and hitting. That began with a behind-the-back dribble. Reggie Miller appeared to stumble, but was able to regroup and hit on the drive to bring the Pacers within one. Oh, Hardaway may have gotten away with a, a palm. Here's Scott from deep. Dennis Scott hitting from two-point range. 22-19, Orlando. George Irvin, the assistant coach for the Pacers, was trying to shout out instructions to his team to take a foul there. They had one to give before the clock hit the two-minute mark, but the Pacers didn't respond. Again, Mitchell on the drive. This time he was stripped. Kept alive by the Pacers. Scott for three. Rebound, Antonio Davis. Well, Antonio Davis was putting the hard fall on Saturday as the mod reported earlier. Hurt his elbows, hurt his back, but is all right with a very impressive bank move on the rebound. Looks like Jack Neese called a technical foul on someone on the Orlando bench. Well, now it's called on Dennis Scott. A technical on Dennis Scott. The... The personal foul was called on Workman. Actually, this Hayward Workman was giving a foul there, an intentional one, just because they had a foul to give, and he did it very aggressively. Let's see if Dennis Scott overreacts to that hard foul and maybe tosses the ball right back at Hayward Workman. He did. And that is kind of considered as taunting or possibly starting some kind of a, an altercation there as... Dennis Scott threw it low, not intentionally trying to hurt Hayward Workman, but he did intentionally throw the ball at him. Yes, the NBA has made an effort to cut down on those situations because of what it could lead to, and so it is under the jurisdiction of the taunting call. Horace Grant way off. The game tied at 22. A minute 20 left in this first quarter.
Terrell is on the floor for the first time. Has not seen much time in the show. And that is Terrell. Indiana leads 24-22. Well, the offensive end for Indiana looks like the wide open spaces without the big people, Smith and O'Neal, in the game. Nice move by Hardaway to get it right back, and the game is tied at 24. Terrell had the step and lost it. Turner with a good play. Here's Hardaway, chased by Antonio Davis, and draws the foul. All kinds of driving lanes for Indiana without the big people in there. Jeff Turner just does not have the lateral movement or the foot speed to stay with a player like Dwayne Farrell. And at the other end, the Magic going to their one of their best post players. Maybe their best, maybe their second best, I don't know. But Anthony Hardaway certainly gets it done in all those post-up situations. If you don't come down and double-team him right away, he is going to make you pay. Wayne Farrell has not played since game one of this series. A look at uh, Anthony Hardaway, first couple of rounds, average 17 a game. And against Indiana, just under 23 per game, averaging 11 assists. He had 14 and then 15 assists the first two games of this series. The Magic up 26, 24, 35 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Mitchell! has tied the game at 26. Scott with no hesitation for three. Rebound Antonio Davis. And Indiana wants to hold for a final shot of this first quarter. The Indiana Pacers hoping to tie the series at two with the scene shifting back to Orlando on Wednesday. The Magic trying to go up three games to one. Now to five seconds. Now to three. Scott for three. He's been off. Time runs out in this first quarter. A first quarter that again is seeing Shaquille O'Neal forced to the bench early after picking up two fouls, and Shaquille appeared to be on a roll. So that has really hurt the Magic. Game tied at 26 after one here at Market Square. We'll be back with the second quarter in a moment. The 1995 NBA Playoffs on NBC. As we discussed earlier, the Magic having problems with dribble penetration. Hayward Workman on the screen wall getting to hear Jeff Turner coming over to help. And Byron's, uh, Brian Shaw not helping. And we're going to see Sam Mitchell come right in there. Nobody covering inside as the Pacers get a wide open, easy lay in. So the Pacers and Magic tied at 26. Indiana has uh, done the job off the boards. Uh, rebounding Orlando 13 to 6, 3-0 on the offensive glass. It's a game that saw the Magic drill off a 13-0 run. They hit their first six shots. Indiana bounced back. They had 11 unanswered points. Orlando only four for its last 15 following the good start. Shaquille O'Neal is back on the floor playing with two fouls. And Mario Davis had it knocked away by Shaquille. Hardaway trying to move on Scott and he is held. The basket will not count. Well, Shaquille O'Neal, that defensive play, taking a tremendous chance there as Antonio Davis is trying to create something by driving to the basket. Shaq had a couple of strips in game one of this series, but with two personal fouls, he would be better off keeping his arms high in the air so the officials see him possibly not fouling. Byron Scott called on that last foul. Hardaway on a post-up, a beautiful move by Penny Hardaway. The Magic got 28-26. Hardaway has nine points. Second quarter, Marv Albert with Matt Kukas and Ahmad Rashad from Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. And Tony Davis with a rare outside opportunity and gets it back. Wayne Farrell given the room. The kill on a back tap, but it's handled by Workman. Well, there is just not a lot of firepower on the floor for Indiana right now with Rick Schmitz and Reggie Miller and Derek McKee all on the bench, you got to try to figure out where they're going to get some offense. Oh, well, Antonio Davis going at Shaquille O'Neal, and it's apparent that the intent 
is to try and get Shaquille suckered in to pick up a foul with Davis going right at him. And a foul is called on Antonio Davis, who did an excellent job against Shaquille in the second half on Saturday. Well, Shaq had some foul problems there, was not as aggressive here. Shaq having to give ground to, to let Antonio Davis get excellent position. I mentioned the job that Antonio Davis uh, did on Shaquille O'Neal with Rick Smith in foul trouble. Foul is called. Workman raising his hand, but trying to throw the foul with Davis. Antonio picks up his third. I thought, though, Shaq had a lot of good shot, shot opportunities the other day, but was not able to hit. He did. It, actually, Antonio Davis made some good initial contact just to push Shaq maybe one step further out than he'd like to be, but Shaq still got in there, put up some jump hooks. They wouldn't fall, and what was worse for Orlando, they did not have any good offensive rebounding chance. Well, Brian Shaw trying to get it to Anthony Hardaway, and Hardaway with the steal. It's a four-on-one. Holloway, Ethan Mitchell, serving up a faithful. Whoa! That's the kind of game that Indiana does not want to get into with Shaquille O'Neal on the floor because he feels that the Magic just had too much firepower. And when Anthony Hardaway can make a play like that, you see the talent that he has and the rest of this Orlando team. Well, that got a reaction from the Orlando bench at the expense of Sam Mitchell. And a foul against the Magic, it's on Turner, that is his second. Byron Scott leaving his feet to make that pass, Hardaway saw it coming all the way, he's going to get the steal, give it to Shaw, right back to Hardaway, as Shaq running interference down the middle of the floor, and Sam Mitchell getting one throw right down on his head. I think Sam was posterized. <laughs> The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Microsoft, the leader in software. Where do you want to go today? And by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. Well, the Orlando Magic have played in Market Square Arena 13 times and coming into today with only two wins for their last victory here in Indianapolis. You have to go back to November of 1992 when a rookie by the name of Shaquille O'Neal led the Magic to a 131-16 victory. This back in the, the Matt Kukas era. Matt with a great coaching job in leading the, the Magic. I remember it well. Yes. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> And, and you can see how successful Indiana has been uh, here at home during the regular season, right behind Orlando in terms of success at all. Successive rejections by Orlando, but kept alive by the Pacers. Sam Mitchell has provided offense in the first half off the bench to hit three out of three. Six points. The game is tied at, at 30. Ryan Shaw now operating against Hayward Workman. The save by Shaquille and pinned by Smith. Shaw facing the double team momentarily. Shot clock is down to one. Hardaway unleashing. Just didn't get it off. And the deflection by Shaw providing the magic with a new 24. Well, this is the kind of aggressive defense that we saw from the Pacers in the second half of game three, out on the perimeter, being very strong with their hands, moving their feet, and really challenging every pass and every dribble, making it difficult for the Magic to get into any kind of offense. Shaw double teamed, and then it's kicked out by Grant. There's that defense again, and lack of ball movement is enabling that defense to be very effective. What the Magic have to do is start beating that pressure off the dribble, get into the scenes and make the pass, but Ryan Shaw is all kinds of trouble. Grant coming over to try to help out, but just no spacing too close together. Sam Mitchell hears it from the crowd, sitting down, replaced by Dale Davis. Pacers and Magic tied at 30. Early in the second, Smiths, and back 
comes hard the crowd looking for a foul, and now the foul is called at midcourt. Workman actually breaking up the fast break attempt. Well, Rick Smith had his little hook shot across the lane, blocked the last time by Shaq, tried to fake him, but Shaq is being very aggressive with those two fouls. It looks like he's not going to worry about that. He is going to have to be pretty selective, though, because he got away with a strip, he's got a block shot, but Shaq is out there playing hard, not worrying about the consequences right now of his foul situation. And Smith's only one of six from the field. Reggie Miller and Mark Jackson have returned. Here is Shaquille O'Neal. Well, Shaquille got off very fast. As you mentioned, that looked to be pumped up right at the start, and then was uh, sent to the bench with the two fouls. But he's hit four out of five for eight points. Here's Miller. And the rebound lost by Grant. Well, this is a terrific move by Shaquille O'Neal on the spin. It's going to end up being about a 12-foot jump hook. And even if he makes a lot of those, I don't think the Pacers will mind that much. They don't want to get uh, have him get baskets in transition, get baskets off offensive rebound, and get a lot of dunks. They'll live with the turnaround jump shot and the jump hook. And there is the turnaround jump shot by Rick Spence. Only a second field goal. He has four. And the game is tied at, at 32. Last touch by Hardaway. Kicked it out. Decent enough pressure by Reggie Miller, but even better pressure by Mark Jackson, forcing that turnover. Jackson for Davis. Indiana trying to take advantage. Orlando very slow on the transition after that turnover. Well, that's been a problem for them all season long. Nothing going inside for Rick Smith. Shaquille O'Neal has just been stopping him, but Rick Smith has that ability to step out on the perimeter and make that face-up jumper as Dale Davis inside. Nick Anderson getting the ball. 7.36 remaining. First half. Well, we should uh, point out once again that uh, because of the NBA ban, there are no spinning pinwheels in evidence behind the Orlando Magic uh, basket. The uh, pinwheels have been banned. We did talk about it, though, with a number of Orlando uh, players, and we asked Dennis Scott, has he ever been distracted uh, more so than uh, what we saw here the other day? I think a lot of guys do see, you know, what's behind the, the basket. And but back in college, playing in, in Cameron Indoor Stadium, they would hold up panties, bras. They, they would they would put up anything to try to get you to miss the shot. I hope I can say that on NBC, can I? That <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Dennis really has to get a grip on himself. Reggie Miller hitting the three. And the Pacers now lead 35 to 32. Five minutes gone by in the second quarter. Shaquille O'Neal right back. And the Pacers lead by one point. Dennis Scott referring to his days as a member of the uh, Georgia Tech team that would go into Duke and face a few distractions. Well, they say that is one of the great arenas in college basketball. A very clever student body that comes up with all kinds of things to distract opponents. McKee off the fake is fouled. Shaquille O'Neal coming out for the block. Brian Shaw also involved, and Mike Mathis calls it on Shaw. Uh, I think that uh, Brian Shaw thought that they were going to call that on Shaquille O'Neal. I think he also got hit in the nose on that drive by McKee. And the big concern, as far as the Magic were concerned, whether or not Shaquille O'Neal picked up his third personal foul, but it goes against Shaw. So Derek McKee, who has been a, a man who has provided a lift offensively in this series for the uh, Indiana Pacers with his first point of the day. McKee, 8 of 12 for the field, 22 points in game three on, on Saturday as opposed to what took place in the series against the Knicks when he was in constant foul difficulty and the foul on Jackson that is his first trying to apply that pressure that puts the uh, Pacers over the limit in the penalty so they'll be shooting free throws the Magic have had them in that in such a situation ever since the eight minute mark so it would be wise for them to take the ball to the basket go inside try to get as many free throw situations as possible well Steve Javi in a discussion with Orlando coach 
Brian Hill. Looked to be all under control. I don't think there was any argument involved. That's an overwhelming edge for the Pacers on the free throw line in game three. They made 18 more foul shots and attempted 21 more than Orlando, a big factor in that game three win by the Pacers. Brian Shaw has picked up three assists here in the first half, hitting one of two at the line. And a uh, substitution. Apparently that was the, uh, the discussion. Brian Hill alerting Steve Javi that after the free throws, he would substitute Hardaway for Shaw. On that drive by Derek McKee, I think Brian Shaw was hit in the nose and eye area. He has some blood showing, so he had to come out of the ballgame. Smith's getting in deep and rejected. That's the third block for Shaquille. Anthony Bowie who just came on. Rebound tied at 37 and that's why Larry Brown does not want to get in an up and down game with Shaquille O'Neal on the floor Shaq can do more damage in that kind of situation and on the offensive board rather than trying to work in the post all the time ran over to help knocked it away Miller for three yes well Reggie Miller three of three from downtown he has 12 points the Pacers lead by three. O'Neal. And Jackson starts back. Jackson pushing it down. Jackson delivers to McKee. Beautiful play by Hardaway. Able to steal it. And here he comes. Hardaway for Anderson. And Hardaway trying to finish it off. The air ball. Loose ball foul is called a Smith's and Referees Mike Mathis, Steve Javi talking it over. Jack Neese actually had a walking violation on Shaq before any of this contact. As Shaq, let's watch his feet, just bullying in. I don't know about there, but Shaq could have been called for an offensive foul as he burrowed into Rick Smith. And then worse for Rick, Shaq fell right on his right hip, and that's going to be very sore, I'm sure, before too long. 5.20. First half, and the Pacers with the ball in a three-point lead. Smiths fouled by Grant. O'Neal let him go, did not want to pick up another foul. It's on. No, they changed it. It is Shaquille with his third. Rick Smiths on the pick-and-roll situation, getting the ball out on the left wing. Showing the ball ever so slightly and then driving hard, just trying to draw contact. And once again, Shaq with the big gamble in there, trying to get the strip instead of keeping his hands up high. And the Mike Mathis right there on the call. Jeff Turner will come on. That was not a smart move by Shaquille O'Neal. That's a low percentage play reaching in to try and slap the ball away. Well, he's made a few of them since he came back with the two personal fouls. He got away with the strip. He had a good shot block on a hook shot by Smith, which is very difficult. I think Shaq, as I said earlier, just making up his mind. He's not going to worry about that. He doesn't want to get into a thing with the referees. He's going to go out and play his game and play it very hard. Anderson off the lead. Nick Anderson able to hit over Rick Smith, 41-39, Indiana. So Jeff Turner is back. Turner with Grant, Bowie, Anderson, and Hardaway on the floor for the Magic. A key being guarded by Turner. Morris Grant guarding Rick Smith. McKee for three. Really comfortable with the three-point shots, despite the fact he is seven for ten in the series. Oh my goodness! Shaquille, uh, Penny Hardaway just posting up Reggie Miller as Nick Anderson did before and abusing him. Game is tied at 41. They double up on Smiths. 
seven remaining on the 24. Well, on the previous play, Reggie Miller got caught in front of Nick Anderson. Here he got caught right in between trying to get around and Penny Hardaway on the quick, quick catch and move before any help could come. Indiana maintaining possession. Jackson for three. Well, Mark Jackson has had the touch. He is four of five from the field. He has ten points. He's hit two from downtown. Indiana by three. On the turnover, Jackson trying to feed ahead, but a foul is called. And Jack Neese, or the Steve Javi over at the Orlando bench, pointing at Tree Rollins. He did not like what Tree said. That was a warning, apparently. Steve uh, can't be quick on the trigger. You do not want to mess with him. He was right in the face of Tree Rollins. And you wonder how they can hear in this building. <laughs> oh, they pick it up. As you well know. They almost have a sensor about them. Steve keeping things under control. Three and a half remaining in this first half. Mitchell stripped. With the Indiana ball, the six on the shot clock. And a 20 second timeout called by the Pacers. A bottle shot over near the Magic Best, uh, letting us know that Steve Javi just turned to center assistant coach Tree Rollins and just asked him to mind his own business and keep quiet. I think what Tree was upset about on that move by Penny Hardaway into the lane where he got stripped, he felt that there possibly was some contact and wanted to let the uh, fellas know about it out on the floor as far as the guys with the whistle. Let the fellas know about yeah, it. Keep them well informed. They need help sometimes. Yes. Steve Javi working his 12th playoff game that is most among NBA officials. He has emerged the last couple of years. Indiana 44 and Orlando 41. Marv Albert with Matt Kukas and Ahmad Rashad. This is game four of the Eastern Conference final series. Orlando leading two games to one. Indiana trying to tie it, looking to game five in Orlando. On, on Wednesday night, foul is called on Turner, and that is his third. Reminder, tomorrow in prime time at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, we'll have game five of the Western Conference uh, final. Houston and, and San Antonio. San Antonio now, I'd have to say, Matt, has the home court disadvantage. Uh, they've lost three straight at home at the Alamo Dome. And Houston, in contrast, has won four straight on the road. But the Rockets will try to turn it from the blowout that they suffered at home yesterday. Uh, Houston going ice cold from beyond the three-point line, which has been such a big part of their success. It's amazing now. We're in the middle of game four here, and both of these teams continue to shoot high percentages from the three-point line. And a foul is called. And John Dale Davis is first. Bob Costas and uh, the guys coming up at halftime. And, you know, we hate to pull them away from the barbecue. I know they're very busy. Having a nice time back at the studio, but they'll have the Prudential Halftime Report. 3-11 remaining in this first half. Pacers leading 46-41. Horace Grant has been very quiet offensively in this series. And looking for his first point in this game. And you see the difference there in the scoring. And the big difference is they have, the Magic have put Horace Grant on the baseline when Shaquille is in the game because they don't. Dale Davis is the guy that the Pacers want to commit down and double team. But if, with Horace Grant on the baseline, Dale Davis can't leave him there. So they're making somebody else double team. But in effect, it has taken Horace out of the offensive flow. Reggie Miller claiming it was deflected, but that was the right call. It was not. And it is a backcourt violation. Here's another look at it. He lost it. Good step out by Dennis Scott to force it, but Reggie with a little bit of the acting job trying to sell it. Not real hard. Knew he was in the wrong. Donald Royal has checked in for the first time. Donald Royal not getting the, the playing time of the emergence of Dennis Scott. Ever since the uh, the ankle injury, it has not been the same for Royal. Dennis Scott for three. Yes. Dennis Scott with 10 points. 
And it's a one-point Indiana lead. Well, Dennis has got four for 11 from Freeland in the last game. That's not good enough for him. He was out before the game. He must have shot 200 shots. Out of 225 remaining first half. Jackson. And Miller with the good hustle. Rebounded by Royal. Scott was uh, looking for the three. Made tightly by Mitchell. Anderson back for Scott. Mitchell all over Scott, not allowing the good look. And a foul is called. Foul on Mitchell. Timeout is called with 1.55 left second quarter. You're watching the NBA playoffs on NBC. It is my solemn duty here to do what you have come to expect of me, tell you what's coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report. We'll talk about the Western Conference Finals between the Spurs and Rockets, all tied up at two games apiece, with Game 5 tomorrow night at the Alamo Dome. We'll hear from San Antonio's point guard Avery Johnson, one of the on-court leaders for the Spurs, and a man of great energy, and that's an understatement. We'll also get the thoughts of Julia Serving and Peter Bessie on the first half of the Magic and Pacers. Indiana leads it by a point. Back to Market Square Arena, Marv, Matt, and Amon. Thank you, Bob. And we resume with Dennis Scott going to the free throw line. Rare visit for Dennis to the line. And will not have to face the dreaded spinning pinwheels. He said they never bother him. Right. Larry Brown was a little bit mystified at the complaining of the lack of free throw attempts in the last game by Orlando, but he said, how could they go to the line? They've been taking so many three-point shots. They're not going to get fouled out there very often. So far in the series, Orlando on average, 19 for 26 from the line, as far as or, uh, Indiana, 27 for 34. So a difference of eight on average. Indiana with the big share there. And Orlando has recaptured the lead. They have hit 8 of 12 from the field in the second quarter. They double up on Smith. Good job on Smith. In the well, that's using the 7 for height advantage. Donald Royal got him from behind. Well, just a couple of minutes ago, Brian Hill went even smaller by bringing in Donald Royal for Jeff Turner, who had three fouls. So Larry now Rick taking Smith's the opportunity to get Smith back in there, feeling that he'll be able to guard Donald Royal, who is not real confident from the perimeter right now. However, Donald will have the first step advantage against Rick in a driving situation. Eight points for Smith by virtue of the three-point play. Pacers 49. The Magic, 47. Neil O'Neill sitting down after collecting his third foul. Here's Hardaway, spits over for the block. Came over to help Grant. Rebound Davis. Al Davis off the boards. Indiana continues to dominate at both ends in the rebounding department. Here's the double team on Smith. Gives it back. Miller. And rebounded by Dale Davis. Well, the Magic are very small on the floor right now, but they were getting out-rebounded when they were big. Stop clock at six. Scott. Saved by Royal. And it's a 24 second violation. Dennis Scott looking around saying, where's the foul? He realizes the Pacers are in the penalty. He's just trying to drop that shoulder, put his head down, attack the basket, and see if he can't get back to the free throw line. He just tripped there, either over his own feet or off the Pacers' uh, big foot. 36 seconds remaining in the half. Byron Scott is back, so Scott, Jackson, and Miller. Again, they go three guards. Mike Mathis over at the official scorer's table. Perhaps they will adjust the uh, time remaining in the half. It is a two-for-one situation for Indiana here. 
trying to get a shot up maybe before the 28 30 second mark right in that area put up a shot maybe get an offensive rebound but if they miss or score that would give the uh, magic a, a chance for a possession and maybe one more final possession uh, for orlando 38 seconds now yes, so they have a slight adjustment and back comes Orlando. Down to 20 seconds remaining in the half, and there is a five-second differential between the 24 and the game clock. Hardaway working the clock down. Shot clock at five. Morris Grant continues to have his problems offensively. Here's Scott with his foul. Foul on Grant, sending Scott to the floor with four tenths of a second remaining in the half. Well, the Magic got a good look. Horace Grant got a good look at a jump shot, but a terrific job by Mark Jackson. He had his head up all the way, not only seeing Byron Scott, but seeing the shot clock as well, as Horace Grant able to just prevent Byron Scott from making that layup and send him to the free throw line. But terrific job by Mark Jackson, seeing both clock and man and making the play. So Byron Scott with two shots, with four tenths of a second remaining in the half. Sam Mitchell back, Rick Smiths departing. Rick Smiths without a foul in this first half. The high point men in the half. Penny Hardaway 13, Reggie Miller with 12. And Indiana leads by five points. Theoretically, you can get a shot up with four tenths of a second. When it's three tenths, it would have to be a tip. But Larry Brown, I'm sure, cautioning his team is no foul. Put pressure on the inbounds passer. Shaquille O'Neal, 6 of 8, shooting 12 points, but not able to get as much time as he would have liked with the three fouls. Rick Smith's 3 of 9 for the field, 8 points and 4 assists. Bob of the Provincial Halftime Report, coming up. This is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. At the half, the Pacers hold their biggest lead over the Magic, 53-47. to 47. This one started out as if Orlando might steamroll Indiana. They led 15-3. to 3. Then it was 15-7 when Shaq went to the bench with two fouls. He winds up with three fouls at the half, played less than a quarter in terms of total minutes, and that is a big reason why the Pacers were able to get back into the game and take the lead by a half dozen. Shaq shot six for eight and scored 12 points. Hardaway had 13. Miller a dozen in the first half on three of four. Three-pointers, Doc your thoughts on the keys here well what you know what started out as a track meet really turned into a de defensive gym uh, Indiana got a lot of long offensive rebounds when they were down 15 to 3 they took it in transition and uh, transition and they elected to shoot the ball they want to control the tempo but they don't want to walk up every time and play against uh, Orlando set defense they will elect to run when they have the opportunity and they did that in the first half and they're playing better defense than Orlando I hate to kick a guy when he's up six points, but I'll do it anyway and second-guess Larry Brown. I, I don't understand why he took Ritz, Rick Smith out of the game after Shaquille O'Neal got in foul trouble. Why react to Orlando? You want Smiths in the game, but he took him out when Jeff Turner took Smiths to the outside and hit a three-pointer, and then he put him on the bench. He also had Miller and McKee on the bench for a long stretch. They had no offense. I thought they could have broken the game open in the first quarter. Smith's eight points, two rebounds at the half. Turning now to tennis, the French Open began today in Paris, and among the winners on the men's side were top-seeded Andre Agassi and the Austrian Tomas Muster, whom many consider a favorite on clay, although John McEnroe thinks Muster has peaked too soon and will not win the French. Second seed Pete Sampras starts play tomorrow. On the women's side, top seed Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, Steffi Graf, who's 19-0 and this year, and Gabriela Sabatini were among today's winners. Our coverage from Paris begins this coming week weekend with three hours on both Saturday and Sunday. Up next here, we'll turn our attentions to the Western Conference Finals as we hear from San Antonio's Avery Johnson. That's after this message from Prudential and a word from the NBA.
financial concerns, medical problems, anxiety about the future. 50 million Americans turn for help to one particular company, a company whose sole purpose has always been to bring them to a different state of mind. Peace of mind, security, protection, optimism. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. Sometimes trouble comes looking for you. And that's when you have to stop. Think. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And find a way to not let it get you. Peace. Typical Vesey hates to kick a guy when he's up. Game five of the Spurs and Rockets in the Western Finals is tomorrow night here on NBC. San Antonio even things at two with a couple of wins in Houston, and one of their key guys, obviously, this year has been point guard Avery Johnson. He was only a role player at St. Augustine High School in New Orleans. The star of that team was Orlando Magic forward Donald Royal. Southern University was Johnson's third collegiate stop, and he twice led the nation in assists there. Undrafted, though, by the NBA, he made his pro debut for the Palm Beach Stingrays in the USBL. Then finally on to the NBA, where he's played for five teams in seven years while becoming just the fourth player in league history to improve his scoring average in each successive season. In Avery Johnson's third separate tour of duty with the San Antonio Spurs, he's turned opportunity into success. Jim Gray visited with him yesterday following Game 4. You had been a guy, Avery, who had been on five different NBA franchises. This is your third run with the Spurs. Right. You played in three different colleges. What's going through your head right now, knowing that, that you have achieved and you're on the verge of a major accomplishment? Well, I just want to stay humble, you know, because I know where I come from, and uh, I don't want to go back there anymore. So I just stay humble and hungry, and that's what I tell my team. Stay humble and hungry. Uh, keep the fire. Uh, that's why I play so hard, because of where I come from. So if we continue to keep Keep the fire. If Avery Johnson continue to be the player that he knows he can be, uh, I don't want to think about it too much now. I want to wait till July 1st. You guys had not had a team meeting all year. You go down 0-2. Not a good time to be calling a team meeting, but you had one. Tell us what went on in that. Well, I, I don't know. That's our fifth one, but that's the first one that's been publicized. <laughs> but it, it was a tough team meeting. Uh, it was quite volatile, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, uh, especially when Dennis goes off. Uh, I'm the only one that can keep him under control because I best press 400 pounds. But... <laughs> It's amazing because when we lose, the focus is on him taking off his shoes and not getting in huddles. But Dennis is not the reason when we lose, and he's not the reason when we win. Uh, all of us are little Indians on this team anyway. David Robinson is the chief. So uh, we're just trying to let the media know, you know, Dennis is not the problem. Uh, he's not the solution. He's just a part of our basketball team. How do you keep these guys focused? How is it that you're able to manage the diverse personalities of this team? One of my strengths always in life have been to know how to manage people, especially with a de degree in psychology. <laughs> you learn about all kinds of strange behaviors. So uh, these guys on the team, it's not easy to keep them in line. It's a challenge, but I think I've got, done a good job of really keeping them in line since, uh, since I'm the, one of the chairmen on the board, I guess. <laughs> little guy like you, though, it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> I mean, little guy shouldn't be telling big guys what to do. Well, it's a tough job for tough people, and uh, I've accepted the challenge. A lot of times you say things, you, you know, guys don't really agree with it, but in the long run when they know you're doing things and saying things for the betterment of the team to win a championship uh, then they'll follow you did you feel as though maybe your NBA career was really never going to blossom having been through all those teams and well, been to all those places I think my my life story in this NBA just applies to people to tell them just don't give up uh, you have a dream and when you have the skills to go along with the dream it's not like I couldn't play and I kept dreaming this I knew I could play and I just didn't give up. Perseverance is a key, no matter what, what type of uh, work you're in. And uh, I think my, my story just, I need to inspire other people outside of basketball, and I think I'm doing that. 
Is anybody going to be able to win a game at home? <laughs> well, hopefully uh, on Tuesday um, we can do something really special for our fans. We've been letting them now. So we've worked hard to win 62 games, and our uh, saying was to get home court advantage throughout the playoffs. We haven't taken advantage of it, but they're such a great road team in the playoffs. So I think if we come out with the edge, respect them, and don't come at a comfort level like we did in the first game, we'll be okay. Coach speaks before each game, and you give a game thought. We'll be your thought before the game on Tuesday. Uh, well, it, I don't speak all of the time. It's Terry's turn on Tuesday. They always, they always let me speak to the team when we we need a win, like when we're down 0-2. You or, don't need to win on uh, Tuesday. Game six. No, let me let me rephrase that. We need to win on Tuesday, but Terry's gonna handle it. And if we can be successful on Tuesday, when we come back here to Houston, then it'll be my turn. Terry, of course, a reference to his teammate, the veteran Terry Cummings, who is an ordained minister. How about this little guy? Oh, I'll tell you. you how know, about it, me it, calling anybody a little guy? <laughs> but but how about guy. him anyway? I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry. <laughs> if teams are blessed with one spiritual leader, it's a real bonus. And this, this team has two in Avery Johnson and in Terry Cummings. And uh, we had a guy named Bobby Jones, who was ours with the 76ers. But he most reminds me of Steve Mix, a guy who was cut seven times before he finally latched on to one of the NBA squads and became an all-star. And I'll tell you, if Avery keeps going at the pace that he's going, he might be an all-star in this league one day. Ida. I mean, this guy is the key to every series because everybody's playing him to shoot. Just make him shoot. And if he continues along with Vinny Del Negro to outplay the Rockets' backcourt or at least neutralize him, the Rockets do not have a chance. Oh, another bold statement. Well, if the, if the backcourt is able to do it, sure, because they, the, the centers neutralize each other. All right, they are telling me that we have to go, so we can't continue this conversation, but I must read this. Starting tomorrow, the conference finals go to primetime here on NBC. Game 5 in the West, back in San Antonio with the Spurs and Rockets tied at two apiece. On Wednesday night, Game 5 in the East in Orlando, and on Thursday from the Summit in Houston, Game 6 of the Western Finals, all at 9 Eastern time. Halftime now in Indiana, the Pacers leading the Magic by 6, and back we go to Marv Matt and Ahmad for the second half after these messages from your local station. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. You're watching the 1995 NBA Playoffs on NBC. Welcome back to Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. The Pacers with a six-point lead on the Magic. Marv Albert with uh, Matt Gukas along with uh, Ahmad Rashad. And for Indiana, very solid the first half. From uh, Orlando's point of view, Matt, I, I would think Brian Hill concerned about the foul trouble of Shaquille O'Neal and the fact that uh, Indiana once again has uh, had its way off the boards. Well, Shaq has to find a way to stay out on the floor. He was very aggressive offensively when he caught the ball, and he has to do some of that to possibly get some fouls on Rick Smith, but where he can really do a lot of damage is on the offensive board. He has other players out there that can score in Hardaway, Anderson, and Scott. And the rebounding is a big problem. When you look at the last game, uh, Jeff Turner led the team with seven rebounds. That's just not going to cut it. All right, for the Indiana point of view, let's uh, check in with uh, Maud Rashad, who is with uh, Pacer coach Larry Brown. All right, thanks, Marv. Larry, up by six, what do you tell your team at halftime? Well, I, I think the big thing is we uh, we got to keep playing the same way. We did a great job on the board. They they still continue to shoot the ball well, and we got to try to go at Shaq. You know, he uh, he's been so aggressive and he's playing so well that our only hope is to make him guard somebody and put some pressure on him. But uh, you know, if we rebound the ball effectively and don't get caught up in a transition game, you know, we got a good chance. All right, thanks, Larry. Thanks. Good luck in the second half. All right, back to you, Mark. All right, Ahmad, a look at the middle light halftime statistics. The Magic, 18 of 36, 50% shooting in the first half. Pacers with more opportunities because of the edge off the boards, 19 out of 44. Shaquille O'Neal only 11 minutes because of the uh, three fouls. It's 6 of 8 for uh, 12 points. Pacers taking advantage in second chance opportunities. Uh, Reggie Miller, 4 of 8 from the field. He's at 3 of 4 from downtown and leads the Pacers with 12 points. Both clubs back on the floor, getting ready for the second half. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Indianapolis, where the Orlando Magic have had all kinds of problems at Market Square. They have lost seven straight here in Indiana. That includes last 
season's playoff pitcher. Look at the leading scorers in the first half. Anthony Hardaway with 13. Shaquille O'Neal, Dennis Scott each with 12. And for Indiana, Reggie Miller, the high man with 12 points. Mark Jackson off with a good start in his 18 minutes. Four of six from the field for 10 points. Third quarter underway. Indiana in possession. They lead 53-47. Good play on the double team as Grant came over to help. Anderson. Grant changed his mind as picked off by McKee who was fouled from behind by Anderson. Anderson. Oh, Horace Grant, I think, thinking about things too much. That's where he was getting so many open shots against the Chicago Bulls at the top of the key. He had one. He left his feet and then decided at the last moment to try to pass it as he saw Shaq momentarily open and then the ball deflected for the turnover. No surprise that the Pacers would go into Rick Spitz early. They would love to get number four on Shaquille O'Neal. And they go to Spitz. Draws the double. Spitz with the open jump. Right oh, he just has that feel. Anytime there's penetration, anytime there's a breakdown play, he is the out man. Just stepping out to that 17-foot area. There's no way that Shaq can get out there if he's protecting the basket. Jump ball call. Nice play on the tie-up. Going back to the second quarter, Indiana with the last nine points. Magic going into Nick Anderson on the first couple of possessions, this time picked up by Mark Jackson, who tying up Nick. Last time he was fronted by Reggie Miller. The, the Magic, I think, have maybe fallen in a little bit of a false sense of security, the fact that they have made so many three-point shots. That they cannot rely on that. They have to get back into this game with defense. And Dennis Scott, and Dennis Scott able to go glass. He now has 14. Pacers lead by six. Orlando got off to the good start. They hit their first six shots. They were up 15 to three. Indiana came roaring back with a good run. time a defensive mistake by the Magic with both Dennis Scott and Horace Grant coming to double team. No way should Dennis Scott leave that basket area because that's where Dale Davis is going to be left wide open. Jackson very physical with Hardaway. Hardaway got the step. Grant on the steal. And he Horace Grant took it away from Dale Davis. Shaquille O'Neal with 14. Pacers lead by six. Smiths, Davis, and McKee up front. Jackson and Miller in the backcourt. McKee with the room. And last touch by Indiana. Brown was deflected out by Scott of Orlando. Hardaway and Anderson at, at the guards. O'Neal, Grant, Scott up front. Here's the double team on Shaquille, opening it up for Hardaway. Smiths with the rebound. Jackson accelerates. Miller for three. Yes. Mark Jackson made that play, pushing it down for it, finding the open Reggie Miller. And Orlando calls for time. It is a 20 second timeout. This is the biggest lead of the game for the Pacers. Well, this is that selective running that the Indiana Pacers are looking for. Some discipline. Mark Jackson did it so well in game three, getting into the teeth of the defense on a semi break. And Reggie Miller, if you're looking for him, he'll be spotted up beyond the three point line. And Reggie now four of five. From downtown, Indiana has had the hot hand. Six of 12 in the uh, three-point department. Pacers with a 14-4 run over the last four and a half minutes, uh, going back to late second quarter. You mentioned early in the game, Marv, that the Magic might not have the sense of urgency that you need right now to win a game on the road against a team like the Indiana Pacers. They may be feeling too comfortable that all they have to do in this series is win their home games. That could be a mistake. Double up on Scott. 
Horace Grant, yes. So Horace Grant able to hit. He missed his first four shots. 60-53, Indiana. Three minutes gone by. Third quarter. Davis off the head fake. And he lost it. Well, Horace Grant has been struggling to find some kind of offense here, just getting it, coming up to set a quick bump to try and free up Dennis Scott, and in so doing, his man left him wide open for the jump shots, but they've been few and far between for Horace Grant. Show back on the floor, replacing Anderson passed the three. O'Neal got the step. The Magic looking for a goal ten. Foul is called. It's, it's, they will not uh, get the basket, and that is the first charge to Smith. A little bit of a different offensive look for the Magic with a triangle formed on the strong side. The same side of the ball is there, but Shaq just working in on Smith, and Sam Mitchell did reach up through the rim and knock that ball out. That should have been a good field goal for Orlando. Some of the players on the floor did complain, but not enough to have the officials get together and talk about it. Let's take a look, watch the basket here, and watch Sam Mitchell's right arm going right up through the rim. Yeah, he knocked it out from underneath. Go to Ben, two points for Shaquille O'Neal, who misses on both free throws. Indiana leads by seven, eight and a half remaining in the third quarter. And the key call for steps. Traveling violation. We saw a host of travel calls on uh, Saturday. Not the case thus far today. Rick Smith a moment ago picked up his first foul. Remember, he picks up fouls in clusters. I would think that is a concern of Larry Brown. O'Neal on the rebound, and a loose ball is called. That's on Shaquille O'Neal, and it is number four. Well, I'm sure the Magic upset with Shaq getting his fourth, but really, this is the way he has to play from the beginning of the game. Get on the offensive glass. Just a little bit of a shove there, actually more than a little bit. He extended that left arm to push Rick Spitz out of there, but Shaq can do more good for the Pacers, not for the Orlando Magic, by getting to the offensive glass. Harris Grant with the block, his second of the game. Scott met by McKee, who took it away. Hardaway recaptures. Out of foot race there, Mark Jackson and Penny Hardaway. Penny just too quick. Indiana with a 12th turnover. Orlando has nine. O'Neal getting down deep and hammered by Mitchell. Sam Mitchell. Ball for the second. And O'Neal just took a long walk. He missed his previous two free throws a moment ago, trying to settled himself down. He had turned it around at the foul line in the series. Well, for the season, a 53% shooter against Boston in the opening round, only 58. He improved against Chicago. And now 0 for 4 from the line. Saw the, the figure against Indiana, and he had been particularly efficient in the fourth quarter where he had had problems in the past. And no surprise why he would be so squeezing the ball right now, so intense, trying to make something happen. He is not relaxed out on the floor at all. Eric McKee coming off the 22-point game on, on Saturday has uh, had his problems. 0 for 5 from the field. Five minutes gone by in the third. Orlando turnover. Smiths fouled by Anderson. Timeout being called with 6.52 left. Third quarter, it's the Pacers by seven. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Reebok. Come see how the game is played on Planet Reebok. By IBM. Solutions for a small planet. At Ford, your Ford dealer. Has driven Ford lately. Market Square Rin, and doing that last time out, David Craig, the trainer for the
the Indiana, Indiana Pacers was working on Dale Davis's injured right shoulder. It appears that he had injured it just a little bit uh, earlier in the game, and he still continues to work on that right shoulder. And I'll keep you uh, updated on the condition of that, Mark. All right, Ahmad, yes, Dale Davis has had problems with a dislocated right shoulder. He re-injured it in the uh, series against the Knicks, going up for the rebound in a collision with Charles Smith. And dislocated the shoulder on the play. It marked the third time this season that uh, Dale Davis suffered that uh, problem. It has popped out on a number of occasions. Dale Davis, a very important player in the Indiana scheme. Seven-point lead for the Pacers. Jackson for three. Mark Jackson. Who had a good one in terms of his all-around play on Saturday, although only two of eight from the field has shot the ball well here today. Five of seven. He has 13 points. And the reason he's so wide open, his defensive man, Penny Hardaway, going down the double team, and nobody else for the Magic will come over and rotate to him. They're going to have to they're gonna wait to see if he'll hurt him with that jumper time and time again. He's doing it in this game four. And Dennis Scott is now six of nine. He has 16 points. Indiana 63 and Orlando 55. Halfway through the third quarter. Smiths with the jump hook. Gil O'Neal on the floor with four personal fouls. Looking for position. Good idea. Could not convert. And a foul is called on the Pacers. Collecting his first. And trying to do everything so hard. That's normally an easy play for him, but this one's going to go off the heel of the rim as Penny Hardaway and Reggie Miller waiting for that rebound. Traveling violation on Shaquille O'Neal. You recall the, the quote that uh, we passed on at the start of the telecast, Shaquille saying after the game on, on Saturday when he comes here, he feels it's like eight against five. And a foul. That is number five. It was Horace Grant. It appeared that it was called on, on Shaquille, but Horace Grant called for the foul. And it was on Horace Grant who reached in and hacked across the arm of Rick Smith. Shaq is playing with four. One more look at it. Shaq hit him way after Horace Grant committed the initial foul. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe give Shaq a little bit of a breather right now to let him collect his thoughts. He's thinking too much about his predicament with the fouls, how things aren't going well for him out on the floor. He does have four, plenty of time left in this game. And I'm saying just a couple of minutes right now because he's in danger, danger of picking up that fifth one the way that he's playing. Indiana by 10. Well, that matches their biggest lead of the ball game. 520 remaining. Third quarter. O'Neal getting the step and not able to hit. That's the second jump that he has blown. Reggie Miller extending to a 12-point Indiana lead. The Magic calling for time. a little bit too soon and they're really feeling the frustration here as I'm sure Brian Hill trying to get Shaq's mind in the game and get him refocused on some of the things he has to do and a number of Shaq's teammates trying to settle him down. And Shaquille remaining on the floor. He's playing with four fouls. Whistle before the, uh, the shot opportunity. Zahn Smiths got it from behind. That is only the second call on Smiths. And Rick can't really believe that one. He has gotten away with many more rougher pushes than that one, but he's got to be careful as well. Indiana leads by 12. Here's Scott. And a Scott taking it right to the hoop. It's been a strong game for Scott. Has not been doing it from three-point land. He's hit two from downtown. 18 points in all. Indiana 67, Orlando 57. Four and a half remaining. Third quarter. Smith's facing the double team. Here's Byron Scott. Foot on the line. That's a two-pointer. And his first field goal. Byron Scott missing his first four shots. 
Oh, Hardaway! And for Lee Hardaway with 15, and it brings it back to a 10-point Pacer lead. A quick double team by the Pacers. Shaq read it all away and had the cutter. Anthony Hardaway, and there again, that's how Shaq can get his teammates involved and still be a valuable factor out on the floor. It's got bottled up. Good play by Grant coming over on the double team, leading to this. A fast break. Scott for Anderson. Anderson. Orlando, a very explosive team, as Larry Brown and the Pacers are well aware. The big lead is not safe. They opened up with a 15-3 run. Indiana came right back at them. But this, a club that loves to do it with spurts. The Pacers lead by it again. Jackson wide open. This time, could not put it down. Here comes Hardaway. Hardaway on the penetration, going all the way. Anthony Hardaway, bringing the magic within six. I'm a little surprised Larry Brown not taking a timeout situation here because the magic ought to roll right now. And whatever was said and whatever happened in that last timeout made a difference for the magic. Three minutes to go. In the third. McKee, who has been quiet. That is first field goal. He had missed. His first five shots. Pacers lead 71 63. Dennis Scott working against Byron Scott. Anthony Hardaway guarded by Mark Jackson. Here's Scott for three. Oh, rebound Grant. Horace Grant with the fadeaway after gathering in the offensive rebound. Well, that urgency we said was missing has just come back in the last couple of minutes of play. Pacers by six. 220 left in the third. They double up on McKee. Jackson for Smith. Crowd looking for a foul call. Jack Neese makes the call from the outside. It's on Dennis Scott. Well, Penny Hardaway on the cut off the double team as Reggie Miller fails to make the defensive rotation and cover the hoop. And now Penny Hardaway using Shaquille again, who ran the middle of the floor right to the front of the rim and occupied Rick Smith defensively, and that cleared that lane for Penny Hardaway and the lay-in on the fast break. Smith is four of five at the line. Well, Shaquille O'Neal with 14 points. Rick Smith now with 13. Rick Smith with six assists, which ties his career playoff high. Well, Rick is getting double teamed so quickly as the Magic are trying to protect Shaq with those fouls, making sure that they get the ball out of Rick Smith's hands before he does some damage to Shaquille O'Neal. And Turner back on the floor replacing uh, Shaquille O'Neal. It would work on his back for Indiana. Fouls call on Byron Scott. Substitutions continue. Sam Mitchell and Dale Davis return. So apparently uh, Dale Davis is all right. They were working on his shoulder earlier this third quarter. And Derek McKee departs. Only one of six from the field. Six points for McKee. And Nick Anderson gets the treatment from the crowd. Anderson is now two of two at the free throw line. Nick Anderson, the first player drafted by the Magic back in 1989. Put his stamp on this series back in game two last Thursday with that clutch three-pointer with 13 seconds remaining in the fourth. I want to thank Nick Anderson is not forcing things. He used to get so many offensive opportunities. But players that he is out on the floor with, he is just waiting his turn and waiting for the opportunities to come to him. Indiana leads by six. Miller thought he had the step. Workman. Davis was able to keep it alive. And Byron Scott for three. He has been off. Grant on the rebound. And Horace Grant has come to life off the boards. His tough rebound. Minute and a half to go. Third quarter. Dennis Scott looking to back his way. Hardaway picked up on a switch by Dale Davis. And illegal defense called against the Pacers. 
Well, the team that the Magic have on the floor right now still has a lot of offensive capability, but couldn't get hurt defensively. Actually gave up a second shot before this defensive rebound by Horace Camp. But running down the floor that trip, Horace looks winded right now. Very tired. Things have not gone well for him at the offense of the floor. He's always going to work hard defensively and on the backboard, but he looks like a tired player to me. And he said the case on the other day in game three. Both teams now have one illegal defense. Scott off a nice pass from Turner. Mitchell with the rebound. We come up on one minute remaining in the third. Indiana with the ball. They lead by six points. McKee, Hardaway reaching in for the steal. And Hardaway puts it down. Anthony Hardaway with a sensational all-around performance here this afternoon. Well, he is always ready to step it up no matter what the circumstances, but in particular when Shaquille O'Neal struggles, Anthony Hardaway is always ready to go. The group that Indiana has out on the floor right now, again, tough to find offense, but that'll do it right there. Uh, yeah. Nice lead by Workman pushing it down to McKee, 75-69. Indiana, half minute left. Scott got the step. Scott is fouled by Mitchell. He thought it was all ball, but Mitchell hit with his third. Tentative possession by the Pacers without Rick Smith or Reggie Miller on the floor. Dirk McKee trying to make something happen, but everybody's standing around. That enabled Penny Hardaway to get in there and get the strip and the pass back and the strong finish. And Hardaway with his fourth steal of the game. Two at the line. 19 for Dennis Scott. Jackson is back for Workman. Ryan Shaw coming on. Replacing Jeff Turner. And Ryan Hill has been forced to go deep into his bench uh, the last couple of games because of the, the foul difficulties of Shaquille O'Neal, so he's gone to the likes of Turner and, and Rollins. Seen a bit more of, of Royal. Who will play briefly. Shaw back on the floor. 75-71. Indiana, 20 seconds. Remaining in the third. Larry Brown was concerned that he didn't have enough offense out on the floor. Coming back with Mark Jackson to make things happen and Reggie Miller. Five seconds to go. A key around Grant, rejected by Anderson as time runs down. Nick Anderson with the block to stop that shot by Derek McKee. 14 6 1 by Orlando, ending the third. Hardaway, 8 of 16, 19 points, 2 assists, and 4 steals. So Orlando in the midst of a comeback, down by as many as 12. It's a four point pacer lead. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. This copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. Back in Indianapolis, Indiana's led by as many as 12. It's now a four point lead as we head to the fourth quarter. They are on their feet here at Market Square, helping on the pivotal camber, the brilliant running back of the Indianapolis coach, Marshall Falk, coming off a terrific uh, rookie season. In fact, Marshall and the Indianapolis Colts will uh, open up down the street at the uh, Hoosier Dome, September 3rd against the Cincinnati Bengals. Marshall putting us all in focus, Matt. Did an excellent job. The Magic have made the most of their fast break opportunities. Only nine of them in this game, but some of them have been spectacular. And, and more important for Orlando, they have 20 and points on those nine fast break foul. chances. And that's the foul number four on Antonio Davis. Keanu O'Neal out there playing with four fouls. Rick Smith on the bench. Larry Brown likes to pace. The utilization of, of Rick Smith keeps him fresh. Has only two fouls to this point. Ryan Shaw. Anthony Hardaway, Nick and 
Jefferson. Ball with Shaquille O'Neal and Horace Grant. And used by Brian Hill to open up this fourth quarter. Straw passing on the shot, giving it to O'Neal. And for Shaquille, his first bucket in some time. He has 16 points, and Orlando is with him, too. Well, in game three, Antonio Davis was able to bump Shaq early, keep him off the block so far in this game as Horace Grant has a steal. Alert play by Grant. Hardaway, and he's tied the game at 75. I was starting to say so far in this game, Shaquille O'Neal has been able to body and move Antonio Davis wherever he has wanted and has consequently picked up the four fouls on Davis. 18-6 run by Orlando. And the Magic doing it with Thievery, their 10th steal of the game. Four for Hardaway. Shot clock at one. Workman had to force it. It's a 24 second violation. The Pacers have become unglued offensively, very careless with their passing, not moving very well without the ball. Horace Grant having a little trouble dribbling it, but wisely wakes up for Anthony Hardaway, who knows how to finish off the play. Game tied at 75 with a minute and a half gone by in the fourth. Shaw not looking for the shot. He's been given the ring. That was tipped short, rescued by Shaw, and it's a 24 second violation. That shot did not hit the rim. That was an outstanding defensive play by Antonio Davis on the in out, in again type of play. Into Shaq, back out to Brian Shaw, and then wisely, Antonio Davis got around on the front situation so they couldn't get the ball back into Shaquille. Larry Brown getting set to reinsert Derek McKee and Mark Jackson. Miller laid very well by Shaw. Miller forcing. Rebound O'Neal. Shaw in the open floor. Anderson for three. Yes. And the Orlando Magic, after trailing by as many as 12, again showing their poise. We saw this throughout the series against the Chicago Bulls, playing on the road, able to come from way back, and they now lead by three. 22nd timeout called by the Pacers. And now they've changed to the full timeout. The run is now 21-6 for Orlando to take this lead. Akeem and the Rockets, Robinson and the Spurs, Game 5 Tuesday night. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today we remember the only three Pacers to have their numbers retired. George McGinnis played seven seasons with Indiana and was co-ABA MVP back in 1975 along with a fellow by the name of Julius Irving. Mel Daniels centered the Pacers for six seasons and was twice named the ABA Most Valuable Player. And Roger Brown, the Pacers' second all-time scorer, the first-ever player signed by the Indiana Pacers. In recognition of this moment, Miller Genuine Grant will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Fouls called on Brian Shaw. Indiana Pacers runs one of the marquee franchises in the old American Basketball Association, joining the NBA along with three other ABA teams prior to the 76-77 season. You see the numbers uh, hung from the rafters here at Market Square. Pacers struggling with mediocrity through most of their NBA existence. Smiths was blocked. They had never advanced uh, past the first round of the playoffs and turned it around last season, nearly making it to the finals and certainly in a position right here to advance. Indiana, though, having its problems in the fourth quarter. They are one for their last eight shots. That goes back to late third. The Magic coming from behind and now leads 78-75. O'Neal facing the double team. And Brian Shaw not looking to shoot. And O'Neal foul. Alan Smith, that is his third. His third. A look at the former ABA teams making it to the conference final last season. Pacers losing in a grueling seven-game series to the Knicks. Prior to that, 
Go back to 85 and uh, the Denver Nuggets, the last ABA team to make it. Traveling violation and a couple of hops called on Shaquille. Shaq a little bit over anxious there and trying to get the play going, but the Magic offense has picked up ever since their defense got better. And we said going into the ballgame that was going to be a big key. They still have not rebounded well enough. The transition defense not good enough, but there's much better pressure on the ball, and that's why they have 10 steals in this game. Indiana has gone cold. Shaquille O'Neal has played nearly nine minutes since picking up his fourth foul. Rick Smits is now playing with three, eight and a half to go in the game. Anderson from way downtown. O'Neal battling with Smits for the rebound and deflected out by Smits. A new 24 presented to the Magic. Shaw, Smits on the block. Three on two. Jackson for Antonio Davis. Another good defensive play by the Magic. And Mike Mathis calling the foul against Orlando. It's on Anderson, his third. Well, that happened four times in the first half where the Pacers would get scoring opportunities right around the basket and the Magic able to strip. And they're going to get one more right here as Anthony Hardaway able to get his hand in there and knock it loose from Antonio Davis. Reggie Miller. Once again, Reggie is quiet in the fourth quarter. Antonio Davis and a foul against Orlando. And that is number five on Shaquille O'Neal. Well, every opportunity that Antonio Davis has had, he has shown the ball a little bit and then tried to put it on the floor and go by Shaquille O'Neal. This time, Shaq was waiting for him with the arms outstretched, but a good offensive play by Antonio Davis to initiate the contact and no real complaint by Shaq. Antonio Davis to the line for the first time. A 67% free throw shooter during the regular season. And Brian Hill rolling some major dice right here, leaving Shaquille O'Neal with plenty of time, eight minutes to go, with five personal fouls. And the Magic have some things going pretty well right now, defensively, a little bit offensively, but still a big gamble by Brian Hill. Anderson! Oh! And back come the Pacers, who have hit only one of their last ten from the field. Smith for McKee. Indiana, 77. First points for the Pacers in the fourth quarter. Shaw penetrating. O'Neal and a foul against the Pacers. As Shaquille was able to come up with that loose ball, pushed from behind. Foul on McKee, his third. Well, Rick Smith, who's passing the ball beautifully today, mainly because he has been double teamed so much. That time he was into his shot and made a last moment adjustment. Matt, you mentioned earlier perhaps the lack of the sense of urgency on the part of Orlando. Both clubs now playing with a sense of desperation in this fourth quarter. Shaw, who was reluctant to shoot earlier, knocks down the three-pointer from Magic 81, the Pacers 77. And Indiana calling for time with seven minutes and five seconds to go in this fourth quarter. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. By your Allstate agent. For home, auto, life, and business insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by Honda, building quality automobiles in America for the past 12 years. Well, during the course of this series, the Orlando Magic on fire from three-point range in game one. They hit 11 from downtown, five for Dennis Scott. Game two, 12 threes, the big one from Nick Anderson with 14 seconds remaining in the game. And in game three, the Magic with 13 from long range. Penny Hardaway converting four out of 
seven today, six of 16 from three-point land, including Brian Shaw, who knocked one down a moment ago for this four-point Magic League. Shaw from deep in the corner after passing up a couple of opportunities early on. Reggie Miller for Rick Smith, now working against Tree Rollins, so Shaquille O'Neal sitting down. Ryan Hill taking him out right here. Looks like Ryan Shaw came up hobbling. Shaw trying to work it off. And a 20-second timeout is called by Orlando. Well, we talked about the gamble that Brian Hill was making with 8.08 to go in the fourth quarter, leaving Shaquille on the floor with five personal fouls. Went with it for about a minute. Wound up getting a three-point uh, shot for Brian Shaw as a result. But now Brian Hill going to try to buy a little time for Shaq. As Brian Shaw in there to try and get the rebound and did and came down on the right foot the right instep of Rick Smith, and that's how he turned his ankle. So the timeout is called. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Back at Market Square Arena, Marv Albert, Matt Dukas, and Ahmad Rashad with 6.45 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Magic up 81-77. Orlando ball as we resume, and Brian Shaw, who came up uh, limping, sitting down. So it's Hardaway, Anderson, and Scott, along with Rollins and Grant. Scott with a shot clock running down. A spinning jump shot by Scott from two-point range. Dennis kind of enjoyed that one. Well, he made something out of nothing. The execution just was not there on the play. Dennis forced it, but got it. 83-77. Orlando, they've outscored Indiana 12-2 here in the fourth quarter. Shot clock at four. Reggie Miller eluding Nick Anderson. Passed up the shot, and it cost. Won't count. 24-second violation. Well, Horace Grant did bail out Nick Anderson on that play, who turned his head on the wrong man, Reggie Miller. You don't want to leave him open. Was out of position, Nick was. But Horace Grant saved him by coming out and making Reggie Miller make one more dribble. Well, Reggie Miller, who has had a number of heroic stretch runs for the most part against the New York Knicks, has not done it fourth quarter and of the second half of this series. He did it back in game two, but quiet again here today. Only five points in the half. Foul on Grant. That is his fourth. And the ball back to Indiana. Well, tomorrow night in prime time starting 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. We'll bring you game five of the Western Conference Finals. Houston going against San Antonio. We'll be with you Wednesday night for game number five of this series from the arena in Orlando, McKee draws the foul. Nice fake. And it puts number five on Grant. Well, Larry Brown has told us time and time again how much he has to force Derek McKee to be aggressive offensively. And Indiana needs his offense right now. Horace Grant, second team all defensive, as is Derek McKee, has really had his problems in this series with Derek McKee, who is a reluctant offensive player. He feels that by shooting the ball so much that it would make him a selfish player. And Larry has had to try to explain on that. No, you be aggressive offensively, and that'll open up the other parts of your game, the passing, the screening, and whatnot. Well, McKee, six for six from the line. Orlando, 83. And Indiana, 79. Five and a half minutes to go. Jackson. Here's Miller. And hit down from behind. That'll be a two-shot foul. Dennis Scott trying to chase him down. And Miller will head to the line. Well, the wild pass intended for Tree Long. Not loose by Mark Jackson, who just threw it ahead as well. Miller going in clearly for a layup. Inadvertent trip that time by Dennis Scott. Nevertheless, a foul anyway. His right foot, Dennis Scott's catching the left foot of Reggie Miller and sending him sprawling. Well, Reggie Miller, a 90% free throw shooter during the regular season. One of two from the line here this afternoon. 
Shaquille O'Neal back on the floor. Playing with the five, with 5.14 remaining. Orlando with a three-point lead. Indiana needing for victory to tie the series at two. Orlando hoping to go up three games to one with game five in Orlando on Wednesday night. Call is Shaquille O'Neal and Rick Smiths got entangled. Foul on Smiths. Orlando going to the strong side triangle to try to negate the double team from the top. Smiths getting caught on the top shoulder as Shaquille O'Neal has position, but the crowd here feels that Shaquille O'Neal did dip that right shoulder and ran into Rick Smiths. And I agree. Foul. But it's called on Smiths, his fourth, and Shaquille 0 for 5 at the line. In this series, he had been 10 of 13 from the line in the fourth quarter. And Shaquille is back to his problems the line that hit him during the regular season. The Magic with a three-point lead. Smith with the beautiful shot. Orlando, 83. Indiana, 82. They are on their feet at Market Square Arena. Key. A patient setup by the Magic, but Scott not able to hit. And a nice discipline move there by Mark Jackson. It looked like a fast break opportunity. Shaq not back. He decided to pull it back out and run the two-man game with Smith and Miller. Byron Scott. Jackson controlling the back tap. Oh, dangerous behind the back pass. Miller for three. Rebounded by Scott. The Pacers had their chances on that sequence. And Reggie Miller just looks like he has no legs left in the fourth quarter. We have seen him go cold in previous fourth quarters. Hardaway rejected. Hardaway for three. Fielded by Grant. Horace Grant with a big bucket. And the Magic leading 85-82. The clock showing 3.15 left. Reggie Miller has missed his last three shots. Also been hesitating, has uh, not been looking to take the shot. Jackson does. O'Neal with the rebound. Hardaway breaking. He stumbled and lost the ball. And a foul. Loose ball foul on Scott. And a Scott foul. Call for his fourth. Eddie Hardaway deep in the left corner. Step back. To get the three-point attempt off the air ball as Reggie Miller was trying to battle Horace Grant to keep him off the offensive glass and the air ball confused him. And then Penny Hardaway, who normally has great hands and finished these kinds of play, actually lost his footing first before that ball squirted out of his hands as Derek McKee was a little bit casual getting back on that play but able to secure the ball then get undercut by Nick Anderson. McKee, seven for seven at the line. He is a dependable free-throw shooter, 74% for the season. And very casually hits both. 85-84, Orlando just under three minutes to go in the fourth. O'Neal out to set the pick. Hardaway with the step. Hardaway off the reverse. That was all Penny Hardaway, who now... 23, Orlando leads by three. And that is a bread and butter fourth quarter play for Orlando. That pick and roll with Shaquille, with Penny going to his left. Normally, Shaq will roll on the play. Sometimes Penny will throw the lob up there. Miller with six on the 24. Goes to the drive. Reggie Miller comes right back. And Indiana is within one. Now, Reggie 
Gaethje had enough legs on that one. He knew he was going to meet some company there to try to challenge that shot. Smartly took it to the other side of the rim. Orlando with the ball. Able to hit the stuff, but he was fouled. That's his third missed dunk. And all I can think of, Marv, is that when Jack misses these, it's either he's trying too hard and fouled hard, and maybe he's thinking about it. The kill 0 for 6 at the line. Shaquille is missing the pinwheel effect. He'll go for anything at this point to nail one. Having an embarrassing time at the foul line. Reaching called on Grant. Horace Grant has fouled out. Horace departs with only seven points, three of eight shooting. He did have 12 rebounds. Three blocks. Uh, Horace Grant trying to reach in and knock that ball loose from Horace Grant. Didn't reach across and foul. Not a very smooth offensive game for Horace Grant, but always battling defensively, always on the backboards as he helped bring the Magic back to even up the gap that there was six rebounds in the first half. The Magic closing that as they get back into this game, and they did it with some defense and definitely with some rebounding. Rick Smiths to the line. He's six of seven at the line, a 75% free throw shooter during the regular season. You see 84 for the series. He's tied the game at, at 87. Uh, Horace Grant just thoroughly disappointed. Wanted to be in the ball game down the stretch. And Penny Hardaway saying, don't worry about it, Horace. We'll, we'll pick it up for you. Well, that's a major loss, particularly in involvement of Close contest. Anderson able to get to the loose ball. Pacers and Magic tied at 87. A minute and a half left in the regulation. Shaquille O'Neal picks up number six. Another play that the Magic like to use with a high screen roll. Not a roll when Jeff Turner's there. He's going to spot up. Catches at the top, has the option to shoot it, or Shaquille will try to dive into the lane and cover up his defender. He just did it with too much effort. Let's watch it as Shaq backing in on Rick Smith, and actually Rick backing off a little bit, taking a little bit of a bump, and possibly catching that left elbow to knock him to the floor. So the 39-year-old combination player, assistant coach, Tree Rollins, replacing Shaquille O'Neal. Both O'Neal and Grant have fouled out. It has been a nightmare for Shaquille. 16 points, 0 for 8 from the line. And a foul is called. With a minute and 20, or uh, check that, uh, deflected out of bounds. Minute 20 remaining in this fourth quarter. I'm and the game tied at, at 87. Both points are now over the foul limit. And a timeout has been called. You're watching. Timeout run down. The Magic three left. Pacers with two. Both clubs over the foul limit. Orlando now without Shaquille O'Neal and Horace Grant. They lost both. Twenty to go in this fourth quarter. Shaquille O'Neal missing three dunks, 0 for 8 at the foul line. We try to check the uh, record books in terms of worst free throw shooting performances in the history of NBA playoff uh, competition. It's not in there now. But uh, you mentioned Will Chamberlain uh, uh, or might be in there in some some form. I don't think he may, uh, had a, an 0 for for big numbers, but for some 20 attempts. And now the Magic going. 
just leaving Tree Rollins in a one-on-one -on -one situation for Rick Smith. I'm not all surprised by that, because Brian Hill, I'm sure, worried about Reggie Miller getting a wide-open look. Ball going inside to Smith. No double, even after he puts the ball on the floor. It'll be interesting to see how the Pacers defend Penny Hardaway going the other way. Larry Brown has, on a couple of occasions, put Derek McKee, his best defensive player, on Penny Hardaway. And if he did that, he might put uh, Mark Jackson maybe on Jeff Turner. Rick Smith getting the front rim. 8 of 10 from the line. See Indiana 7 of 11 at the line here in the fourth quarter. 18 points for Smiths. Make it 19 along with seven assists, which is a career playoff high. Indiana by two. Derek McKee is guarding Penny Hardaway. Shot clock at seven. And Smith's with the rebound. Well, just that little half penetration by Hardaway drew Mark Jackson away, and that left Nick Anderson with a great look, and he had it halfway down. Out of 35 seconds, Miller still having his difficulties in the fourth quarter. Indiana with a two-point lead. Orlando calls for time with 28 and four-tenths seconds to go in the fourth. And the Magic with 20 on the shot clock. A reminder, tomorrow night from San Antonio, game five between Houston and San Antonio. Greg Gumbel, Steve Jones, Bill Walsh will have it for you right here. NBC starting at 9 Eastern time and uh, will be on hand in Orlando in prime time for Indiana and Orlando. Game number five Wednesday night. 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific. As the Indiana Pacers try to tie this series at 2, Orlando hoping to take a 3-1 lead, but it's Indiana with an 89-87 lead. Brian Shaw, who hobbled off earlier this fourth quarter, is back on Hill inbound. 28 and 4 10 seconds remaining in the fourth. 20 on the shot clock. They are on their feet at Market Square Arena. Hardaway, once again guarded by McKee. Hardaway for Turner. Hardaway checking the clock. Backs it up to go now against Dale Davis. Here's Brian Shaw for three. Brian Shaw three-pointer earlier comes off the bench to knock it down from downtown and Orlando now leads 90 89 with 13 and three ten seconds remaining in the fourth quarter well this two-man game set up with Jeff Turner and Penny Hardaway I think the magic anticipated Mark Jackson guarding Turner he wasn't Mark Jackson was guarding Brian Shaw he stepped in to help the penetration by Penny and that set up Brian Shaw for the good look at the basket who had just cut out before with that sore ankle with Marv as you mentioned he hit a big three-pointer in the left corner in the middle of that magic run so Brian Shaw with six of his seven points here on the fourth. Back after this from your local station. And that man, Brian Shaw, signed as a free agent by Orlando after two and a half years with Miami. Originally a first-round pick of the Celtics back in 88. The three-pointer giving the Magic a one-point lead. Orlando taking the delay of the game to uh, check out the Indiana alignment. 13 and 3 ten seconds to go in this fourth quarter, and Derek McKee will throw in. Pacers have had success going inside to Rick Smith. The last time they did it, the Magic left Tree Rollins alone with him. Indiana has one timeout left. They had some trouble getting it in. Down to 10 seconds. Jackson. Miller taking the shot. And three. A three. A lucky Miller. To give Indiana a two-point lead with five and two ten seconds to go. In the fourth and the magic calling for time. Reggie Miller, who has been struggling in the fourth quarter. Reggie Miller and Brian Shaw dueling three-pointers 
and a screen there by Dale Davis was the one that freed up Reggie Miller. That looked like the play that Indiana wanted. <laughs> Five and two tenths seconds to go. Indiana by two. We'll be right back. Well, there you see the situation, but with Shaquille O'Neal fouled out, Horace Grant fouled out, the Magic have to be thinking three-point shot here. Take their chances, try to get the win now, although they would take a two on the follow-up and take their chances in overtime, but I'm sure, uh, I'm not sure, I have a good feeling they'll look for a three-point shot here. Dennis Scott, Nick Anderson, Penny Hardaway. One timeout remaining for each club. Two ten seconds to go. The Pacers, 92. The Magic, 90. And it looks like Dennis Scott will be the inbound passer, and that is usually the man that will bust wide open with five seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Scott throwing in from near midcourt. Brian Shaw with a three-pointer to give Orlando the lead. Reggie Miller answering with a three to give Indiana the lead. Delay of game taken by Miller. Larry Brown able to check things out. Now telling Miller to drop off Scott. Hardaway. Now the three. Here is the three. Yes! With one and three tenths seconds to go! finish here at Market Square Arena, Indiana. Now calls for the time, and Coach Kukas right on target. Well, everybody, for the three. everybody on the floor for Orlando capable of knocking a three-point shot down. It was clearly set up. Get the ball in the penny and see what he could create. Good defense, actually, by Haywood Workwood to force Hardaway to his left. And under pressure, Hardaway just put a little extra oomph in getting off the floor to make sure he could get a good look and a follow through on this shot. He pounds both feet into the floor to get up and over. Haywood Warfarin, very close to the three-point line, but just far enough behind for Orlando. What spectacular buck shooting by both clubs. How rare it is in this type of scenario to see three in a row where it's all on the line. Well, the whole NBA playoffs, it seems to me, Mark, you know, not every game, but we have seen situations like that in this series. Let's take one more look and watch the right foot of Penny Hardaway and about three inches behind that line. But a tremendous job of shooting that shot to his left. I think normally Penny, he likes to make a move to his left normally for the drive, but I think he would prefer to take that jumper going to his right. And Brian, little body English, getting on that to fall. 26 points for Hardaway, and yes, another memorable Memorial Day contest. Back in 85, the Celtics walloping the Lakers. 91, the Bulls beat uh, the Pistons. Uh, we did that game on NBC, and the Pistons, very upset, walked off without uh, shaking hands uh, with the uh, Chicago Bulls. And uh, then in uh, 93, the Chicago victory over the Knicks, featuring the 54 performance by Michael Jordan. Well, this one will be remembered for some time. Still a... 1.310 seconds to go. And the Magic up 93-92. They do not have their delay of game, but they take the timeout. So Brian Hill want to check things over as to how Indiana would play. And now both clubs have used all their timeouts. And we will take another break. Back in Indianapolis in a moment. Orlando with the one-point lead. You see one and three tenths seconds remaining. Both clubs have used all their timeouts. Indiana hanging back in the huddle. The officials trying to get them to uh, make their move back onto the floor. You hear the whistle blowing. Orlando is ready. Larry Brown taking his time and mapping it out. Already one delay of game warning. It could be another one. I don't think the officials would call in this situation. Normally you would like to have the ball being challenged on the pass inbounds, but with Reggie Miller, probably the guy that's going to get the catch here. A good idea to take the man guarding the passer and just track Reggie and watch.
the fake, and then the step in, and the game winner as Larry Brown sitting there, calm as you can be, to say, hey, we'll take it. Four lead changers, the final 13 seconds for the one point victory. Let's go to Amon Rashad. All right, thanks, Mark. Fred, we talked the other day. You guys just don't know how to do it easy. Well, you got to give the Magic a lot of credit. They hung in there in the fourth quarter, took the lead. But we came back. It was a big part from this team. The big fella. I love this guy. He came through. All right, Rick, it seems to me you got your offensive game going now. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know, in that last shot, I knew we had enough time to give him a fake and step through or, or try to do a foul. But I saw him go by me, so I just put it up. All right, you guys have even it up. We will see you Wednesday in Orlando. Sounds good, Amon. All right, back to you, Mark. All right, Amon. The Indiana Pacers leading by as many as 12. Orlando able to get back into it. They lost to Keel O'Neal and Horace Grant on fouls. And then four consecutive clutch shots down the stretch. It ends with that man, Rick Smith, winning it at the buzzer. The series tied at two. The Pacers 94 and the Magic 93 in a classic. Marv Albert, Matt Kukas, and Ahmad Rashad saying so long from Indianapolis. This has been the NBA on NBC.